So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this fully reversible maxi dress. I do have a pattern for this so I will link that down below and I've tried to make it as beginner friendly as possible. I actually think this is one of my most beginner friendly projects that I've done because the pattern is super super simple. So it shouldn't take you very long even if you are really new to sewing. Um, I think that is everything. If anybody has any questions, you can email me on my website, which is linked down below. So let's get on with the tutorial. So for this project, you will need two different styles of fabric, either different colors or different patterns. This should be a four-way stretch fabric. Most jerseys will do the job. I'm using a 95% cotton, 5% elastane. You will need an overlocker or a regular machine with a zigzag stitch. You will be using that for every single one of your seams. You will need some pins, some flat braided elastic. This is five to six millimeters wide. Some fabric scissors or something to cut out your pattern pieces and some fabric pens or something to draw out your pattern pieces. So I'm going to start by laying my fabric out to cut out my pattern pieces. So I'm going to start with this spotty one. And I'm going to lay it with the right side, which is your printed side, facing up. And then I'm going to take my second piece, which is my gingham, and I'm going to lay that with the right side facing towards the right side of my first fabric. So once you've done that and smoothed out all of your creases, you're going to take your pattern piece and if you're using my pattern, you will only have one pattern piece for this because it works the same for the front and the back. I'm just going to fold that out. And I'm going to draw that onto my fabric. So then once you've drawn that out, you have also got a little line here, which is the area that your slit will go to. So I'm just gonna make a little mark on the inside of the pattern so that I know where to put that to. Obviously, it's up to you where this goes. This is just a rough guide. If you want the slit to be higher, you can move it higher. If you want it to be lower, you can of course move it lower as well. One important thing to notice when you are cutting out your pieces is that there is a mark on both sides for how high you're going to cut your slit. And that's because you are using the same pattern piece for the front and the back. One of them is going to get flipped like this. So when you're cutting out your second piece, you have to make sure you mark your slit on the opposite side to the side that you marked your first slit. So for example, when I was drawing out my first piece, which will probably be my front, I marked up to this line on the left side. And then when I drew out my second piece, I marked on this side, which is the right side. And then once you flip your back piece over, they will match up. You just have to make sure that you do it on opposite sides for each one. So now I'm just gonna go in with my pins and pin within all of these lines that I've drawn. And then I'm going to repeat the whole thing so that I have two identical pieces. So now I'm just gonna go in and cut this out. Just make sure you take your time because stretchy fabric can be difficult to cut out accurately. So 
now you should have cut out two identical pieces which will both be made up of two layers of fabric i'm just going to put one to one side for now and now we can start to attach these two layers together so first of all i'm going to go in and i'm going to sew along these two armholes and around the neckline just making sure you leave this strap open at the top and then I'm going to go in to the very bottom of the dress and I'm going to sew along the bottom hem and then I'm also going to sew up this edge until we find the mark that shows us where the slit goes up to. So now that you have sewn along your armholes, neckline and the bottom of the skirt and up the side of the slit, we're not going to need to do anything more to this area for now, but I'm going to come to my top section and I'm going to take my flat braided elastic and I'm going to lay that right on top of the seam that we just sewed. This is optional. I would recommend it if you can get your hands on some flat braided elastic. I always get mine from Amazon. It will just give a little bit of extra structure. But like I said, completely optional. It will still work if you don't use the elastic. And in terms of which side you attach your elastic to, it doesn't overly matter. But whichever side you do attach it to will be kind of like your more dominant side. So if I were to attach my elastic on top of this side, which is the gingham side, when I wear this spotty side, there is more chance of some of the gingham kind of like showing through. So I would recommend attaching your elastic to whichever side you prefer, whichever side you think you're gonna wear the most. So I've just finished adding my elastic and then I've gone in and repeated all of that with my second piece. So you will have two nearly identical pieces. The only difference will be that one has the slit sewn up on the left side and the other one has the slit sewn up on the right side. So I'm just going to take this piece and turn it to the right side out. I did also obviously remove all of the excess pins. And now I'm going to leave this piece inside out and I'm going to start to place this piece that is the right side out inside the, piece, inside the piece that is inside out. Now you can see this is where my slit is sewn up on this piece and it's going to go into here and it will match up with the slit that is sewn for the other piece. I'm just going to start to match up all of my corresponding edges. So I'm going to take one of my straps, make sure it's on the right side and thread that through. You also want to make sure that the correct fabric is facing the correct fabric. So here, just going to make get this through. Here you can see that I've got the red gingham facing the red gingham and the spotty side facing the spotty side. I'm just going to go in with that with a pin. I'm going to do the same with the other strap.
and then I'm just going to repeat the same thing of matching up all of the corresponding edges all the way down the dress. So once you have pinned all of your corresponding edges together, you should have pinned all the way along this edge and then your edge where that your slit you will have pinned up from there to your armpit and then along your straps at the very top. Basically all of your all that you're aiming for here is to have everything completely enclosed. So I'm going to go in and sew along these edges now. You just need to make sure that you are getting all four layers of fabric when you sew. So then once you have sewn along all of those seams, all that's left to do now is to turn your dress to the right side out. So I'm just going to unpick a small section along one of the armholes, it doesn't matter which one, and you're going to need a big enough hole that you can pull the whole dress through. So now that I have a hole that is a couple of inches wide, I'm just going to gently pull the dress through that hole. And now I would recommend just going in and checking all of the seams that you just sewed to make sure that you've got all four layers of fabric because it can be quite easy to miss little sections, I think. I've done a good job getting them all. So now all you have to do is to close up the hole and I'm going to use a ladder stitch by hand which is what I would recommend. So for your ladder stitch I'm just going to kind of fold these edges over to make the seam and then I'm going to go in on one side and then come over to the other and do a stitch on that side. I'm just going to do that all along the length of the hole. If you need a more detailed tutorial, there are a lot of very good tutorials on YouTube, which is where I learned how to do this. And it will create kind of like an invisible seam. So I'm just gonna keep going into one side for one stitch and then back over to the other side. So I'm going to come all the way along this hole and then I'm going to go back again just so that it's kind of like double stitched to make it more secure and then I'm going to tie it off at this end. So then once you have finished sewing up this hole, your reversible maxi dress is done. If you do, I don't normally do any top stitching myself because I don't think that these need them, but if you do want to do any top stitching on this one, I would recommend going around the slit just to make it a little bit flatter, but you don't need to do that. So if you want to leave it there, then your dress is done.